Just because you aren't named the starter in camp, or second string for that matter, doesn't mean you won't be asked to come in and lead your team to a huge top five upset later in the year. It's true. Latest example, a freshman lefty from LSU. Wyatt's got the ball. Wyatt back to throw. Wyatt look. Wyatt for the end zone. Pass it. Oh, of course, by Matthew Butler. Matthew Butler. What's up? I'm Matt Wyatt, and on this channel, I use my experience as a player and broadcaster to explain things about football and help you enjoy watching the game. It's Thursday, so this is a collab with Chase Thomas of the aptly named Chase Thomas Podcast. And I'll have links in the description if you haven't tried it yet. I highly recommend it. Max Johnson, the son of former NFL quarterback Brad Johnson and Athens, Georgia native, came through for LSU late in the season and gave the Tigers a spark. He's absolutely a true freshman this season that showed he could be a future star in the SEC. The thing is, LSU's plan wasn't to have to go to him this year. Miles Brennan was the starter, and when he got hurt, TJ Finley, another freshman, was the first off the bench. Let's take a look at how things went. Johnson threw for a little over a thousand yards, but really only played in five games, the final five games. That makes his eight to one touchdown to interception ratio even more impressive to me. So you could definitely look at the way Max played late in the season and think he's now the man in Baton Rouge. Well, that very well may be the case in the future, but it stands to reason he'll still have to win out over Brennan and Finley in 2021. For comparison, before his season ending injury, Miles Brennan racked up a lot of yards and touchdowns in the air. Brennan played in only three games, but threw for more yards, more touchdowns, a better completion percentage, and therefore averaged about twice the passing yards per game. He was actually on pace to have a big year in spite of his team's struggles to win games early on. So Brennan was hurt, and LSU turned to another freshman, TJ Finley. And when that started to bog down, they gave Johnson a chance under center, beginning in week six against Auburn. But it was really that Florida game Three touchdown passes on the road, knocking off a top 10, top five team on a national stage. That was the coming out party. He followed that up with a five touchdown game, three passing, two rushing, in the season finale win over Ole Miss in a shootout. All right here's his first touchdown pass against uh, Florida. It's down here on the goal line or at the five. And they're gonna cross the guy on the other side, back of the end zone, and he puts it up in there nicely. Really nice throw. So uh, this is early in the game. It's their first touchdown of the ball game. Look at the formation. It's a left-handed quarterback. They're going to kind of put him on a move over here uh, to his left. The route itself, it's just taking both outside receivers and uh, more or less pick play, but kind of crossing them. They're going to give you two options, one hooking up in front of the safety, the other trying to get across to the other side behind up to the quarterback to read and decide, you know, which one gets the ball. And right here, Tight end is supposed to block one-on-one -on, -one on the edge because of the movement of the quarterback kind of moves him right into the defender. And that underneath defender, he knows I've got all this area. That's where the touchdown throw is, but I've got to make sure I don't drive it into somebody right here. This is a really nice touch throw while pressure is uh, coming. Watch him right here. Okay, so he's free. I mean, and any quarterback can feel it, see it. But his eyes are where they're supposed to be in here, back of the end zone. Again, he knows I got a guy who's getting in this void and it's wide open. But I can't throw a line drive pick right here. So watch him put it up, air under it. So you get it out of his reach. This is really nicely done. And inside of that uh, back line of the end zone where my guy can catch it. That's a beautiful throw. And, you know, when you work on stuff all the time of, driving balls into guys and throwing it hard. It's tough to then, I think, as a freshman coming here and sometimes throw this touch throw. You know, if he hangs on to it, he's actually got a touchdown coming open here too underneath. You see him sliding right there on the hitch. You throw this in there, it's a touchdown to Butte. But he knows I've got, you know, speed at the back corner of the end zone. Kind of see what he sees. And again, throwing it up. It takes guts to throw that in the end zone with a guy right there. And, you know, the first three yards of the end zone ball's picked. If I can get it over its head, it's a touchdown. Good decision, but even better throw. Okay, let's take a look here. Crosser. Good job. You know, in the pocket, this is a, a good pocket that's set up for him. Four-man rush. Step Well, really three-man rush because one 
uh, drops off on this side. So only three. So, you know, he's standing in there. Guys are getting behind him, standing in there reading downfield. You see a pretty quick release, too. Um, if you watch mechanically right here. Ball's back. It's a little bit long. I mean, it doesn't, you know, come right up out of his ear. You know, he's a little bit drop it and then come up, but still not bad. Good footwork and put it on him where it's easy for him to catch it crossing the field and not having to stop. He can catch it on a dead run. You saw the route. It's a nice route, too. We see this more often where they give that inside move and the DB tries to jump it to jam you inside to hold your route up. And they're just teaching you, hey, take the release to the outside and get to your route. Whatever you've got to do to get to your route quickest, take it. And this is what he does. And right here with a, you know, talk about the throw and the accuracy, a defender closing. So if I make him stop and don't lead him, then it's going to be bang, bang and going to get hit. And if I throw it high or high and behind, it could be tipped and picked. So uh, if the accuracy is there, though, just like that, like walk it out and hand it to him where he doesn't have to slow down or stop. Now I can catch it and outrun my guy and try to make yards after the catch. So accuracy on the throw. And this is why a touchdown on busted play right here for uh, Florida. They're going Cobra or corner blitz. And regardless of what is called in terms of the route, you know, um, a quarterback and it's on your hash and you're taught to look for those things. Here he comes. He's reading that side anyway, two-man route over here. And they bring the corner, and nobody defensively, they've got a bus right here, there's nobody over the top to take that deep third or take that man. If it's supposed to come from underneath, they're way too slow on it. So a total bust on a corner blitz, leave them wide open. But good quarterbacks have a knack for making defenses pay for their mistakes. Um, and it's something that you can't teach. They just have a, f a way of finding your mistake and making you pay for it. And he did it right here. See it up top, kind of what it looked like. If you look at Florida, they've got four on the line of scrimmage. If it were a 4-3, you're like, well, there's the three, but they're all shaded off the hash into the boundary. If these are your two safeties, well, one is over this Cobra who's coming to the field, but it's like he's maybe mixed up. You got two safeties coming this way. And I guarantee you one of those safeties is supposed to be the other side. They got their calls mixed up or something to that effect. Here we get a look at a play from behind. Move in the pocket, throw a deep ball. Watch him right here. And we're focusing on a quarterback. You know, this is um, good to watch games like this. And I wish you could, you know, I wish I could get more copy like this because you can see it from the perspective of the quarterback, how, you know, you're looking at alignment and splits. And, you know, in this case, I got a, um, defensive tackle head up my guard, my center's uncovered. You read all that stuff in the run game. Um, but what you do know is when he lines up here, he sees one safety here uh, off the ball, left hash, one safety in the middle, kind of splitting the football. It's two high safeties. And if it is cover two, I'm expecting a hard corner right there. He knows what the call is, a little play action throw. So you can give him a little bit of a fake. Now, again, because his eyes are here and then here, the eyes are in the middle, He's seeing this corner blitz, trying to get free pressure, safety coming over, and it's a matter of, can we cover this? Now, whatever the rules are, some teams' immediate corner blitz is hitch, depending on personnel who you're playing. Other teams, it's hit that sideline, outrun that safety, and that's what you've got right here. So a little bit of movement because I think he's expecting, okay, I got linebacker and corner to this side. I may have to go, but this is a nice job to – kind of sense and see that it's halfway picked up, put my foot in the ground, and now get ready to deliver the football and throw it accurately. So even though it wasn't a straight, clean one, two, three, four, five, and pump or, or you know pump it out of there, get his feet back set, knee going forward, and deliver a strike on a deep ball. A little bit underthrown. You know, you put it out in front of him, you got a touchdown. Probably see it from this angle. Yeah, there goes a corner. Now I got to outrun the safety. One little move. Nice move. Okay, and right now he's beat. So if it's way out in front of him on a dead run, he's just going to run it down and score. So it's a little bit underthrown. And probably the, you know, guessing on the pressure and didn't really know if I'm going to get hit and then having to reset my feet is probably why it's a tad bit underthrown. It forces him to turn around here. Still, though, big play when you needed it. Here they're on the goal line. They get man-to-man, -man, and he throws an easy touchdown here. So rub route, 
is what this is. It's uh, three by one. Actually, it's empty. Um, so your back's coming across in motion, speed motion. When you see him motion like this, and now I got a defender who's running with him step for step, that means it's man to man. Like if I'm going here and that's my man, I got to go with him, right? So it's usually an indication of man to man. Sometimes they'll switch it, but most of the time that's what that is. There's a reason, you know, we got all this going on to the inside. It's because this is a design rub trying to do this. And if they switch it and somebody falls off, then the reed's going to come back in here. If they don't switch it, I'm immediately going to that flat route and they don't switch it. <clears throat> I see leverage. If I've got one step, even if there's room, you know, a two or three body difference, I'm going to get it to him. The key is the accuracy of the throw. And if you're standing there in his shoes, this is a true freshman playing high school football last year. If you're standing there in his shoes and this guy's bearing down on you unblocked, you absolutely feel and see that blue jersey. And it's a matter of, can I drive my knee right into him, good mechanics, and make a strong, accurate throw where my guy can catch it and doesn't have to stop? And he does. Puts it right on him. It's not low. Make him fall. It's not behind him. Make him stop. Put him on him running, and he scores easily. That's a really nice job. Okay, and uh, let's see. We're going to get a stop right on the outside. This is a big play, too. Uh, if you look, it's a 34-31 game. They've got a narrow lead. I <clears throat> uh, can't see all the formation, but it looks like it's two by two, two receivers wide side. Nope, it's actually three because of the tight end. So uh, it's three by one with a back in the backfield. Florida putting four in line of scrimmage. It's uh, two linebackers in there. So this is a nickel with two high safeties. He's seeing that on the pre-snap. And so, again, what he's thinking is if it's true cover two, then I've got a hard corner. That means he'd stay up here. This corner would defend this flat area. And if my, I've got a vertical call, I may have a chance for a whole shot back in here if I can hit it before the safety comes over. Maybe, you know, I'm just guessing maybe that's what he thinks pre-snap. He gets a snap, <clears throat> and what's happening? They're rotating it down to man, okay? And it's a little hard for him to see because his fake is to his right. The fake to the back is to his right. So he's actually got to take his eyes off of this side of the field. When he snaps it, again, it looks like cover two, like I showed you. But when he snaps it, this is that trigger blitz for the nickel coming off the hash. So watch him come down. It's uh, to make up for that. It's the safety coming over to take this guy man to man. Safety rotating back to the middle of the field to be the center fielder. And it's now man to man out here on the edge, man to man route. Turns, it's picked up, but it's not picked up great. I mean, they're really trying to get in his lap right here, not to mention the tight end is letting some, some leak happen to the outside. So again, it's a left-handed quarterback reading the wide side of the field, and he's got two guys, blue jerseys, getting in his lap as he throws the football. This is really impressive to me because he didn't get the go-route runoff He's getting a curl or stop comeback right here where the ball's got to be let go to the back shoulder of the receiver in a, like a one-on-one -on -one route with the timing and the accuracy so that uh, the receiver can make the play and the DB can't. And he's doing this with a guy jumping right in his face about to tattoo him. And not only does he let it go, he can't even get a full release on the ball. Look, his arm is hitting the helmet of the Florida defender as he lets it go. I mean, that hurts. That's injury stuff right there. Okay. But look how strong this throw is. That is an absolute dart. Now, I know the defensive back fell down, but that is an absolute dart. Okay. That's 15 yards downfield from where he lets it go or more. And he didn't even get to really follow through. That's a really impressive deal. Now, it turns into a 30 plus yard play because the DB fell down. Um, but still, it's a nice throw, given the pressure, especially. And this was just, you know, this is not a throw, but a play late in the game. Tie ball game, 34-34, with a minute and a half left, first and 10. You got to get it across midfield to try to get in field goal range to win this thing. And they're going to ask him to run the ball and read it. Turn, he's reading the end man on the line of scrimmage unblocked, right? That's going to be his read. Now, you know, I say that they're pulling two backside linemen and tight ends coming across, so... Maybe it's straight call. I don't know. It looks like a read to me. They're going to turn him loose. And if he steps down inside, I'm going to keep it and follow those guys. And that's exactly what happens. 
Okay, so now he's to the edge and go make nine yards and help to get your team in field goal range, which they eventually did. Took out a coach on the sideline also. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, would you consider subscribing to this channel? I really appreciate that. And if you wouldn't mind, hit that like button for me, which is a great help. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, reach out to me on social media. I'm Radio Wyatt. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.